Is Crocodile a 20s game? Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you for tuning in to Tracy Boards. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is way too reductive. Yes, 20s are important, but the game of Crokinole as a whole is much more nuanced than that. And by the end of this video, I hope to convince you that while 20s are important to the game of Crokinole, Crokinole is not a 20s game. And I want to know your thoughts on this. Do you agree, or am I just a wishful thinker hoping to keep the game of Crokinole alive? Let me know in the comments, and let's get this conversation started. Now, there's no question that 20s matter. Looking at the game mechanics, one, they're worth the most points, and two, they're permanent. Any other scoring disc you can demote or knock off the board. But the 20, as soon as it's scored, comes out of play. And the only way to cancel it out is getting more discs on the board or by scoring a 20 yourself. So needless to say, it's pretty important. And on this conversation of whether Crokinole is a 20s game, people are often referring to the open 20. Every round of Crokinole starts with a 20s race, and whoever wins that has an advantage going into the remainder of the round. Justin Slater, five-time world champion, has said himself in his tutorial of open 20s that the most important skill in Crokinole is the open 20. The issue is, as the community grows and the skill level goes up, people have noticed a trend of more and more 20s being scored. Some people are concerned that the game has been reduced to a 20s shootout. And this concern was most recently brought up after the Belleville Crokinole Challenge. As the Crokinole Center blog puts it, two 20s world records were broken, and there are some concerns that too many 20s are being scored. This is not the first time this conversation has come up. Four years ago on Board Game Geeks, there is a thread talking about how top level play looks boring because of how many 20s are scored consecutively. And anytime we post a video of a perfect round, we hear about it. So all of this to say, is Crokinole a 20s game? To answer this question, first I looked at data from Crokinole Reference, an extension off Crokinole Center, which includes information on scores and 20s from a vast array of tournaments. I looked at the preliminary rounds from the last five singles and last five doubles tournaments and average out the scores in 20s to compare across tournaments. And no surprise, we see a decent correlation between how many 20s you score and how many points you score. Which makes sense. You put Connor Ryman, world champion, against John Doe, who came out for a fun community day, you can probably guess who's gonna score more 20s and by extension, more points. But this correlation isn't perfect and there are certainly exceptions to the rule. Anecdotally, I made it into the A pool at the Belleville Crokinole Challenge with a 20s average of six per game, which isn't very good. Tom Johnson placed fourth in the preliminary round at the World Crokinole Championships with one of the lowest 20 scores amongst the top 50 players. So at the very least in the preliminary rounds, you can make it high up on the scoreboard without scoring a lot of 20s. You don't need to rely on the 20s game to win Crokinole. So the question becomes, do we see this correlation stay similar or get stronger when we look at the eight pools? To compare this data, rather than looking at average 20s and average points, I simply looked at the player's rank and 20s rank within their respective pool. When we look at all the pools together, we see a very similar correlation to what we saw in the preliminary round. A decent correlation between rank and 20s rank, but not perfect. And for all of you that say that doubles is less of a 20s game, here's a fun fact for you. When we look at the doubles A pool, the correlation between rank and 20s rank is significantly stronger than that in the singles A pool. In fact, in the singles A pool, the correlation is kind of weak. So does this mean that Crokinole isn't a 20s game? Well, then I looked at the outliers, specifically the players that moved on past the afternoon pool into quarterfinals, semifinals, or the final round. And in the singles A pool, 10 out of 10 times, the top 20 shooter in the pool is moving on to the next round. The top two shooters within the singles A pool win 87% of all tournaments. So is that it? Is Crokinole a 20s game? Well, I guess we could have ended this video at the 15 second mark. Is what a lesser man would say. Sure, the perfect rounds are piling up and those numbers are a pretty good argument to say that Crokinole is just a 20s game but let's look at who's scoring those 20s and how they play Crokinole. In the previous season of the National Crokinole Association, we saw four players at the top of every singles tournament. Slater, Reinman, Hutchinson, and Carfiello. And yes, they are all insane when it comes to shooting open 20s, but to say they're winning just because of those is so reductive to how good they are at Crokinole. Let's look at Justin Slater. 
five-time World Pro Criminal Champion, and most recently won the Belleville Pro Criminal Challenge. And yeah, he hits a lot of 20s, but when his opponent misses, most typically he's not gunning for another 20. He's rolling to the outside or placing his disc perfectly between the posts or perfectly in front of a post or behind a post. His defensive strategy is immaculate. Let's be clear, this isn't just good strategy, but skill to pull this off perfectly. Let's look at Andrew Hutchinson, another player, top player, with a very similar play style. Nolan faced off against him in the 2024 Frosty Flick semifinals, and as Nolan puts it, Hutchinson's ability to move a disc millimeters to the perfectly worst spot is phenomenal. So when these players do this, it is a combination of in-depth strategy and perfect execution. John Conrad is another name to bring up in this conversation. He's the Croconal Goat. And the shot that was named after him? Not a 20. In fact, when you have the opportunity for an open 20, you instead shoot somewhere where the opponent can't really use it. And I guarantee you, most players who try this are more likely to set up their opponent than actually pull off a Conrad. It is insanely difficult. All three of these players, while slightly different in their defensive strategy, show an understanding of a game and a skill to execute that strategy to a degree that is unfound across most of the world. But Garrett, these strategies don't work unless you're up in the 20s. That's true, but I'd also say the 20s game doesn't really work unless you've got this strategy to go with it. To say one is absolute without the other isn't that accurate. And if you're thinking Crokinole is just open 20s and then defensive strategy, that's also not necessarily true. Look at Jason Beerling. He's been in the semifinals the last two tournaments and he has an aggressive play style. Whether he's up or down in the 20s, he's gunning for another one. And the reason it works is because he's so freaking good at it. Follow throughs, angle ins, touch 20s, you name it, Jason can hit it. Matter of fact, he almost beat Slater in the semifinal round at Belleville. The point is, these top players have a ton of skill and strategy within their toolbox. And yes, these top players are great at their open 20s, but to say it's just a 20s game is highly reductive to the arsenal that these top players bring to the game that is Crokinole. And that is my two cents. We've seen in the preliminary round that 20s don't necessarily dictate where you'll land in the rankings, and you can do pretty well without scoring a lot of 20s. Even when we get to the afternoon pools, while it appears that 20s have a great influence to moving on to the next round, we've also seen that the players scoring those 20s have a wide arsenal of skills and strategy that allow them to be at the top, and respect has got to be shown to that. But I want to know your thoughts. Do you agree, or am I a wishful fool? Is there something I missed? Is there something else that needs to be brought to this conversation? Let me know in the comments. Thank you again for tuning in. As always, happy flicking.